In this video, we'll look at the law of constant proportions in the fifth unit for grade 9 advanced science. We actually were introduced to this concept in our very first experiment in the unit, the electrolysis of water. In that experiment, we found that if you decompose 9 grams of water, you would always get 8 grams of oxygen for every 1 gram of hydrogen. That illustrates the law of constant proportions, which can be stated like you see here. Compounds like water always contain the same percentage or proportion or fraction of their elements by mass. Since water is made of oxygen and hydrogen, when you tell me that there's always going to be 8 grams of oxygen for every 1 gram of hydrogen in water, that illustrates this law of constant proportions. The percentage of elements in a compound would always be the same, no matter how that compound was made. We don't have to just look at water for to illustrate this. We can also use the zinc chloride experiment. One other experiment in the unit, we synthesized zinc chloride and we calculated the percentage of zinc in zinc chloride. Every student did a different um, amount of zinc chloride. They synthesized different amounts, but they always found that it was 48% zinc by mass. So since there's only two elements in zinc chloride, there must be 48 grams of zinc combining with, with 52 grams of chlorine to make 100 grams of zinc chloride. That comes from the idea that there's 48% zinc and therefore 52% chlorine. In fact, we could write a simple little recipe for that. We could say 48.0 grams of zinc for every 52.0 grams of chlorine for every 100.0 grams of zinc chloride. And right there we have a mass ratio very similar to the water mass ratio in the electrolysis of water. And we can use that ratio, this, this ratio with three things in it, we can pull any pair of things to create a unit multiplier. For example, in part A, we're asked what mass of zinc would react completely with 10 grams of chlorine. So to answer that, we'll take the 10.0 grams of chlorine that we were given in the question. We want to know what mass of zinc you would need to react to with this chlorine. So we'll set up a unit multiplier. We'll get rid of the grams of chlorine and we'll switch to grams of zinc. Now the ratio up above, I just realized I should have put a little 2 there, Cl2 is the formula for chlorine. Um, so in our ratio, 48.0 grams of zinc will react with 52.0 grams of chlorine. It's almost a 1 to 1 ratio. So 10 times 48 over 52 gives me 9.23, three significant digits, grams of zinc would react with the 10 grams of chlorine. Part B, what mass of zinc would you need if you wanted to make 500 grams of the zinc chloride? Well, again, we can just pull two things out of this ratio for the zinc chloride experiment, and we can answer that with a unit multiplier. So 500.0 grams of zinc chloride is what we want to form. And we're wondering how many grams of zinc do you need? So we'll get rid of the grams of zinc chloride and we'll ask how many grams of zinc. The recipe up above, the ratio says 48.0 grams of zinc can make 100.0 grams of zinc chloride. So just a little bit less than half, 48 over 100. So 500 times 48 over 100 will keep three significant digits, 240 grams, 240 with a decimal grams of zinc would be required to make that zinc chloride. All right, so you can see I'm just using unit multipliers and the new recipe that we have, the mass ratio, in the zinc chloride experiment. Part C, how many grams of zinc chloride could you make if one gram of chlorine reacted? 
why don't you pause and see if you can set that up yourself. So we have 1.0 grams of chlorine reacting. We want to know how many grams of zinc chloride could you produce. So we'll get rid of the grams of chlorine and ask how many grams of zinc chloride could you produce. From the recipe up above, 52.0 grams of chlorine can make 100.0 grams of zinc chloride. So this is going to be almost twice as much. So 1 times 100 over 52 gives me 1.9, two significant digits, 1.9 grams of zinc chloride could be produced from the 1 gram of, zinc, of chlorine. All right, I'm going to skip down to question three on your worksheet. Let me see if I can enlarge that so you can see it. So here's question three on the worksheet. This one starts off with a little bit of a different question, but we'll just uh, read the introduction. In the synthesis of copper oxide, 63.5 grams of copper metal reacts with 16 grams of oxygen gas to produce copper oxide. All right, so write a balanced chemical equation for this experiment. So this is a little bit different, the balanced chemical equation. Well, copper, it tells us in the question, is just the symbol Cu. It reacts with oxygen, and we're told in the question its symbol is not just O, it's O2. And this is producing, so we're going to draw an arrow and it produces copper oxide whose formula is given up above in the question, CuO. So the left side of this arrow, the things I'm highlighting here, those are called the reactants in the reaction. In other words, that's what you had at the beginning of the reaction, and they were reacting with each other. The thing that I'm going to highlight in green on the right, those are the products. In this case, only one product, copper oxide, is being produced. You can think of what's highlighted in orange as before the reaction, and what's highlighted in green is after the reaction. Well, before we can begin, we need a balanced equation, because the number of atoms that you begin with have to equal the number of atoms that you finish with. So, for example, when we look, we see one atom of copper on the left that we began with. We see one atom of copper on the right that we finish with. And that's fine. That means it's balanced. We haven't gained or lost copper atoms. But we see two atoms of oxygen are on the left. That little two subscript means two atoms of oxygen. But on the right, in copper oxide, there's only one atom of oxygen. So we have a problem. We lost an atom of oxygen. The law of conservation of mass tells us that you have to have the same mass before and after. That means you have to have the same number of atoms of each element before and after. To fix that, we're going to put numbers in front of the chemical formulas. We cannot just go and add a 2 down there as a subscript because that would change the chemical formula of copper oxide. So you cannot change the subscripts, the little numbers on the bottom right beside each symbol. But you can put numbers in front of formulas. Right? So, for example, if we have two oxygen atoms on the left and only one on the right, we can fix that by putting a coefficient of two in front of copper oxide. So now we're not creating one molecule of copper oxide, we're creating two. In those two molecules of copper oxide, there are now two atoms of oxygen. So the oxygens are now balanced. But our coppers now are screwed up. We had one copper to begin with, but now we have two. That coefficient of two means two coppers also. So to fix that, we go put a two as a coefficient in front of copper. And now this equation is balanced. Now before we finish it, why don't we take the information from the question. We were told 63.5 grams of copper reacted with 16.0 grams of oxygen to make the copper oxide. Part B says what mass of copper oxide would be produced? 
I'll stop and think about that for a minute. How much copper oxide could you get if 63.5 grams of copper react with 16 grams of oxygen? Well, the law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass that we begin with has to equal the mass that we finish with. As long as you don't add or, or lose anything during a chemical reaction, mass must stay the same. So therefore, we can take those two masses, 63.5 grams of copper, and add it to 16.0 grams of oxygen, and we can say that there must be 79.5 grams of copper oxide produced. The mass of the copper oxide produced has to equal the mass of the reactants, because copper oxide is the only product in this reaction. So I'm going to go up above and put the 79.5 grams of copper oxide there. Notice that we now have a complete mass ratio for this reaction. 63.5 grams of copper reacts with 16 grams of oxygen and makes 79.5 grams of copper oxide. So we could use this mass ratio to solve problems. Take a look at part C. What mass of copper oxide could you produce if 50 grams of copper metal reacts? Well, why don't we try just doing a little mental math. If you had 50.0 grams of copper metal, we're wondering how many grams of copper oxide could you get? Well, notice in our recipe, we had 63.5 grams of copper and it produced almost 80 grams, 79 and a half grams of copper oxide. We now have 50 grams of copper. So that's a little bit less than what we had originally in the recipe, right? Therefore, we're going to get a little bit less than 79.5 grams. Just a little mental math. Maybe we're going to get around 70 grams, just as a quick mental estimate. But let's now get it using a unit multiplier. We'll convert our grams of copper to grams of copper oxide. The recipe tells me you can get 79.5 grams of copper oxide from 63.5 grams of copper. So let's grab a calculator. 50 times 79.5 over 63.5. Oops, my mental math kind of sucks. <laughs> I thought 70. It's 62.6. grams of copper oxide would be produced in this experiment. All right, why don't you try part D? You can pause the video and see if you can do that yourself. What mass of oxygen would you need to react with 10 grams of copper metal? All right, whoops, let me just switch pens. So 10.0 grams of copper metal, and we want to know what mass of oxygen would you produce? Sorry, would you need to react with that? So let's get rid of our grams of copper and ask how many grams of oxygen would you need? From the balanced equation, we saw that there was 16.0 grams of oxygen for every 63.5 grams of copper. So grabbing a calculator, 10 times 16 divided by 63.5, we'll keep three significant digits, 2.52 grams of oxygen would be needed to react with that copper metal. And part E, if you want to make 1,000 grams of copper oxide, what mass of copper metal would you need? Pause the video and see if you can answer that. All right, so you need to set up a unit multiplier, 1,000 1, grams of copper oxide. We want to know how many grams of copper metal would you need to do that. So we'll get rid of our grams of copper oxide units and we'll switch to grams of copper metal. From the balanced equation up above, from our recipe, 79.5 grams of copper oxide 
would require 63.5 grams of copper. So 1,000 times 63.5 out of 79.5, 799, yep, 799 grams of copper would be needed. All right, so those are all of the questions in question one and three. Now notice we could also have calculated something like what's the percentage of copper in copper oxide? Since the copper 79.5 grams of copper oxide needed 63 and a half grams of copper to make it, we can take the 63 and a half grams of copper, we could divide by the 79.5 grams of copper oxide and times by 100 to get percent. That copper oxide is 79.9% copper. If we took 16 grams of oxygen and divided it by 79.5 grams of copper oxide and multiplied by 100 to get percent, it's 20.1% oxygen, right? So you can use those recipes to find percentages as well. All right, so there's an introduction to the law of constant proportions. You can now finish this worksheet. You may have some troubles balancing equations. If so, message me on Google Classroom for some help about that or ask in our next Zoom meeting. Good luck.